Good afternoon all, another package to open. Uh, this is breadboards and it's, I'm a bit nervous about this because it's these 830 tie point breadboards and uh, the last time I bought one of these it was this one and it's a dud. You just can't get wires into it because the, the little metal uh, inserts in here don't have a wide funnel, they have a very narrow funnel and so metalwork is sitting across this gap and you try and put wires into it like this okay that side's gone in but this side just won't go in and one evening I persevered with this and I built kind of chips and resistors and capacitors up to about halfway and it nearly sent me completely mad my anxiety levels went through the roof because you can get one side in but this side I just oh it's gone in finally but you can spend hours sitting here tapping the wire to try and get it to go through the hole and it just won't. So the question is, are these going to be the troublesome 830 tie point breadboards? Oh, they're all in boxes. That's interesting. There are seven of these. Um, or are these going to be nice ones? Well, let's find out. So more recently, I've kind of stuck to the 400 tie point breadboards and these... Um, well, I've not had any bad ones of these, so you can actually get... Uh, <laughs> well, it depends on how you cut the bottom of this wire, because when you cut it with a pair of pliers, it puts a sort of straight edge on there. Now, I haven't had any problems with these. They're not a problem. Sometimes you have to put them in at a slight angle, because the metalwork is slightly biased off to one side. I found that, so let's put that in at an angle. but. Yeah, it goes in and you just learn to feed the components in at that angle. Generally speaking, these are fine. And I've been using these ones with the little round uh, hookup, the little round stud. Now, the other one, of course, has a, a square dovetail. These ones I've been allocating to my 8-bit uh, breadboard computer. The ones with the dovetail I've been using for the vocoder. Let's have a quick look at that. And well, yeah, I mean, at the moment it's hanging up in its new place in the workshop, but um, there's the beginnings of the breadboard vocoder. And as you can see, I've got quite a few of these uh, 400 tie point breadboards with my patented, no, not patented, my hole drilled in the middle and they're mounted on this uh, pair of decking timber. So that should accommodate the whole vocoder over that, uh, that area. You can see these ones have the square if my camera would focus yeah you can see on these they've got those square dovetail joints uh, sometimes the dovetail is on the red side sometimes it's on the blue side so you have a variety of well I didn't bother to connect these because uh, they just don't connect to each other I've connected them end on that seems to be fairly consistent now seven of these um, I think I paid a fair bit of money for these let's have a quick look actually so here they are. These are the MB102 solderless breadboard, protoboard, 830 tie points, these. Um, I like these because they've got the two power rails either side, so I can have my 12 volts, 5 volts, 0 volts, all that sort of stuff. So um, they sell a lot of these, don't they? 2,000 sold, $2.22 each. So I must have paid about $15 for these seven, free shipping, DIY electronic. Right, these have little windows in the front so that you can have a sort of cursory glance at these things and at first glance they do seem okay because what you're really looking for reflecting back at you is a couple of lines and those are the tops of the funneling which is not properly out into its uh, far well out of the way of this hole if you can see that line running through the middle of the hole or both of the lines well, then you know that the funnel is not very wide and your components aren't going to go in. I'll try and get a view of this compared with my bad one. Well, there's certainly different uh, shades. This is the bad one. And um, I didn't cut that very square. I think my cutters are a bit blunt, actually. So I'm just wondering how these ends are cut. Let's take a closer look. So you can see that when you cut it with wire cutters, you get what is in effect a sort of wedge or chisel end and it's flat in one orientation but of course it's a pretty sharp point 
in the other. So when you come to put that in the breadboard, it depends whether your flat is running across or the other direction. Now that goes into my bad, bad breadboard that way around. It does take a little bit of waggling, but putting it this way around, and of course sometimes you will want to put it this way around, it's very hard. Let's get close in on these. So the bad one is this creamy coloured one, and I mean you can see, can't you, the tops of the little metal inserts, and you can see why it prevents you pushing the wire in if the wire hits on these two tops. And in many of the holes you can actually see both of the tops. And yes, I was having a devil of a job trying to get these wires to go in. Uh, and I was trying all sorts of techniques like um, I've got a safety pin here and I was trying to push the safety pin in the hole and sort of ease these metal tops across and you can get it if you push it hard enough you can get it to stick but then of course it doesn't make contact so it was an absolute nightmare this one looks a lot better because I can't see anything under those holes let's try my little bit of green wire well this plugs in absolutely dreamily it's a delight I've got no problems at all plugging that into um, various selected holes in this breadboard some of them are a bit tighter than others but yeah essentially that goes in whereas it doesn't go in on the majority of the holes on this breadboard so some of these 830 tie point breadboards are just rogue and i'm just going to pull out um, one of these inserts on the rogue breadboard so you can see just how bad the funneling is and uh, why this is such a problem and uh, these bad ones are just shockingly bad there's just no spread there at all the tops of those entry points are so close together that it's very easy for the flat end of a cut component to just sit on top of them and not slide into that gap at all Ugh, it was really frustrating trying to get components into these and uh, although I don't really want to do this with my brand new what seems like a good breadboard I'm just going to hoik one of these out because I want to um, compare them directly so that you can see what the relative funneling is like and um, well that's it I mean it's just totally different the one on the left is just completely unusable I don't know how the manufacturer of that piece of rubbish could have thought that that was going to be any use it's just awful the one on the right has those really well pouting lips almost a very wide pout on there the one on the left is uh, nowhere near as good is it so it looks like um, I've got lucky with this purchase of seven of these breadboards from DIY electronic so what I need to do now is uh, drill a couple of holes in these things now am I going to get all hung up about exactly where I drill the holes so that my particular layout oh no I, I can't be bothered with all that I think I'm just going to drill a couple of holes pretty much in the same places that I was drilling them for these and get these mounted on my decking timber ready to build the breadboard vocoder so it looks like we've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten groups of these five power holes. So I'm going to put my mounting points in the middle of this cluster of five and in the middle of that cluster of five. Uh, camera's right where I want to put my head. So I'm going to do that off camera. So I've punched some um, holes. One I punched so hard it actually went right through. Let's drill these. Just down into this bit of decking timber. That's the one I didn't punch quite so hard. Right, let's swap the 2mm bit now for the 2mm or 1.98 I think it was plus countersinking attachment. Put that in and this is where you've got to press really hard. But you see the point about this is that that bit stays centred in that hole so that things don't wobble around and go all eccentric so let's do this it's 
So I think I've gone down enough. Now what I've got to do is just use uh, my small pliers to sort of pick all the bits out of this, clean it up with a knife, and I'll show you the end result. So now that I've got the larger hole in there, I can actually just clean that up just with a drill in my hand. But you see, if you don't countersink that hole, there's no way you can keep this thing centered. So I'll just take all the mess out of that one and this one. And now everything stays on a common center. And once this is done and cleaned up, it actually looks pretty good. So it takes a bit of fiddling around with pliers and a knife just to clean that up. But the end result is pretty nice. Let's have a closer look at that. And then I put my screw down in that hole and it hasn't quite breached into the um, electrical metal part. So I'm not going to have any problems with the screw. And in any, in any case, the screw is, um, the screw head is a lot smaller than that hole. So there's not going to be any problems electrically with that. Yeah, there's the little um, M2 screw, which I bought. I bought a set of these little M2, quite long screws. And they do sit in those holes rather well. And there is a bit of an advantage to having the 830 tie points over the 400 tie points. Let's just get this sorted out. Oh, there it is. Um, yeah, because... The, there's not this gap in the middle where the two 400s are joined together. Um, it's it's more continuous. These holes, the power holes, are slightly further away from the these end rows. But uh, yeah, I mean these are 400. Two of them, that's 800, and this is 830. So I think you get um, what is it? Three extra rows there. So this Vokoda breadboard is quite big. That's only about half of it. I'll just tip the camera across so you can see the remainder of the space I've got on these two pieces of decking timber. But yeah, so what I want to do is get some of these um, pairs of 400s off now. I'll undo these screws, uh, move them down and start putting the, uh, the 830s in here. They're actually exactly the same length, interestingly, uh, a pair of 400s and the 830. So let's start undoing some of these. Did I just shoot that last video in portrait mode? Goodness me, that's the ultimate sin. Shooting video in portrait mode, whatever next. Right, now you can see that I've had to slightly compromise my layout because where the holes are in the board, I've had to kind of avoid them because I don't want to put components there and then find I can't get the screw back in. Uh, that one's going to be a little tricky to get out, so... Let's lift that one out like that, take that out, put the uh, 830 that I've just created. Now I've got to get all my positives in the same orientation. And of course these holes aren't going to line up, are they? Yeah, interesting. So let's get all these breadboards over the whole of my decking timber and see what it looks like. And so the finished breadboard is going to look something like this. I've used the space at the top. Uh, to mount breadboards the other way because I just think I'm going to need that space. This is a pretty big um, project so that extends down to there. I've got a little bit more space down at the bottom uh, to add more breadboards if I want to but uh, yes yeah, a big one isn't it? And uh, so now you know what the two mil drills for that's for drilling through the hole in the breadboard and what that 1.5 millimeter drill was for that I uh, got the other day well that's for drilling a hole in the timber underneath to take the M2 screw. And this is the countersinking tool and that all works pretty well. Well, I think this video deserves a thumbs up. Me too. It's a bit like a garden, isn't it? This is gonna be my garden of electronic components over the course of the next few weeks. So yeah, this is my big breadboard vocoder built on decking timber. And uh, I should really get started putting some components in. Cheerio.